Well, time is running out. Gloucester are eight points clear at the top of the table. We just haven't been able to keep up with them. We have to hope that they have a little bit of a drop in form during the last nine games of the season. But first of all, we've got to do our part and keep the pressure up by beating fourth place York City. Let's do this. Welcome back, you lovely people, for another episode of Dog Turds Into Diamonds. Yeah, we are here turning Dog Turds Into Diamonds with AFC Rushton and Diamonds in the Vanarama National League North. As you can see, since you were last here, we have not managed to reel Gloucester in. They have just been imperious. Let's just start off having a look at their form rather than talking about anything we've been doing. They have just been absolutely ridiculous. Um, you can see they've lost to Blythe in the FA Trophy fifth round, which I think was a huge, huge shock. But outside of that, in the league, they just keep on racking up the wins. They have only lost once all season long. Um, look at this form they've been on. That, that away defeat to Bradford PA, their only defeat all season. It's just so demoralizing when we get a decent result just to see them just churning out the wins. And then when we get a poor result, just seeing them taking advantage of it. Um, so if we have a look at our form right now, um, the last time we were here, of course, we beat Hereford 5-1. We've had a number of free weeks. We've had a number of free Saturdays since then so i keep organizing little tournaments against local teams just to bring in some cash i've worked out that from uh from a, a little weekend tournament with some of the teams local to us they're they're, they're small non-league teams but if we if we organize a 14 cup we can make about seven thousand pounds over the weekend so every chance i get um we had a little Dale Roberts trophy here in honour of uh, the ex-Russian and Diamonds goalkeeper who passed away during his time playing at the club. Um, so we had a little memorial trophy for him. The, the, the club do have uh, a, a memorial game for him every single year to raise uh, money for charity. Um, and we've had a couple of other friendlies against Concord against Rawns Town, which is another local team. So that was a, a nice cheap game that brought in a few thousand pounds. And uh, we, we've organized a Diamond Cup after this York game. And the strange thing is, um, we've had all these free weekends. And then you can see here, as we get into April, we go back to playing every few days again. It's absolutely ridiculous. Um, so that's pretty annoying. But anyway, um, if we look at our results since we were last here, so we beat Hereford 5-1, of course, on the last Livecom. We then went away to Geisley, got a good 3-0 win here. I made a couple of tactical tweaks, which I'll uh, talk about in a moment. Um, Cameron Gabadebo got two goals in this game, and you're going to see in a minute, he has suddenly gone on a little bit of a run. When we signed him, we were hoping that with his, I think it's 16 jumping reach and 16 uh, determination. I think that determination has now gone down to 15. But when we signed him after he was released by Manchester City, we thought he would be that goal scoring centre back, just killing everybody on set pieces. And the last few games, he has had a little bit of a run being that 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 player that we wanted. So. He got two um, two goals heading in from a corner here. And Lloyd Marsh Hughes also got a goal, which was very, very nice to see. He'd been on a bit of a barren run. And uh, we came out with a really dominant performance and a really straightforward victory. So uh, we kept the run going there. Uh, we then played Nuneaton Borough at home. They came up with us. From the Southern League, they look like they are going to go straight back down. They had a good first half of the season. They were in mid-table. They have dropped like a stone 
in the second half of the season. You can see in terms of the stats, they actually gave us a decent game here. They had a decent amount of possession, seven shots on target. But we were just really, really clinical with the chances that we made. James Price got two, the last one from the spot. And Cameron Gavadebo once again heading in two corners. So he had now had four in his last two games after I think only having two all season. So that was really, really pleasing. Um, we moved on and we then faced off against Spennymore away from home. And as you can see, a nil-nil draw. It was another one of these games where we just couldn't find the breakthrough. We completely dominated the, the entire game. James Price played a 6.3. He was very disappointing. I think by the end of this game, we were playing 4-2-4. We moved Marsh Hughes forwards, just really trying to get that goal. But you can see from 17 shots and 10 on target, we only had an XG of 0.87. It was really, really difficult in this game to create any good chances. And uh, yeah, so we dropped points there. And uh, unfortunately, that allowed Gloucester to get a little bit further away from us. Um, we then went away to Alfreton, who are bottom of the table, I believe. Um, this was a very, very straightforward win, as you can see from the stats once again. We really controlled it. Lloyd Marsh Hughes got another goal. Uh, I think that one was a penalty. And then James Price wrapped it up in the second half. He now has 30 goals this season. He is well and truly the, uh, the Brown Sterling replacement that we were looking for at the start of the year. Those £500 a week that we gave him, more than £100 uh, above anybody else in the squad. Well, it, it's proven money well spent. We then had a wonderful home game against Warrington. 7-2. I think this was our second 7-2 win of the season. Um, so Hughes started things off with a really nice free kick, I think it was. Waltman then got a rare goal for him, set up by Price. Lloyd Marsh Hughes with two more goals. James Price then got on the score sheet himself in the second half we made some changes they had a red card jack brown got a goal which was really really nice um, obviously he hasn't had the same opportunity this season so good to see him on the score sheet and mason burstow who has been a very very good backup striker came off the bench to finish things off with a seventh goal disappointing to concede two from only four shots on target but it was a very, very nice win. Again, we we had less possession again. Um, again, I'll show you what we've done tactically, which has kind of affected our possession, but seems to have helped us to score more goals. We then went away to Altrincham, completely dominated this one. Again, not so much possession as usual, and they did have five shots, but James Price got the all-important goal in the second half. A good hard-fought 1-0 victory there. And just speaking about a couple of players, well, Gabadebo, he's just been absolutely phenomenal. Eight goals now in 33 appearances for the centre-back. Really on fire. His determination has dropped from 16 to 15, unfortunately. And he's got 18 jumping reach. I thought it was actually uh, uh, 16. 18 jumping reach and 15 determination. He's been absolutely incredible. He does have interest from Bradford City and his contract only runs till the end of the season. He's not interested in renewing a new one just right now. I hope I can get that wrapped up before the end of the season, but he has been absolutely superb. Um, James Price, as we said, he has now got 30 goals in just 37 appearances. 19 years old what a debut season and it's been really nice this season to see lots of these yellow arrows he hasn't developed that much because i mean our, our training is just so limited um obviously being part-timers and having a small uh coaching staff but he has been doing really really well it's been really nice to see just how well he has progressed through the season i really hope he can become a football league quality striker um, we might need to go up this season and turn professional 
to really help him develop. But excellent, excellent signing. And um, again, we'll speak a little bit more in a moment, but he is now signed up for next season as well, which is great. One that is not going to be here the next season is Diamond Edwards. He has got a real arse on. He is not happy. Look, he has played 30 games this season. He started 17. He is a squad player and he is complaining that he hasn't had enough game time. Really, really disappointing from the Diamond Giza. And he is wanted by some football league clubs. Northampton Town are very, very interested. They don't want to offer 7,500 though. I think if they're that interested, he'd be an absolute snip. I mean, he's done okay this season. He's got a 7.06 average rating, five goals, five assists, 15 first touches, just phenomenal. I mean, he's just a wizard with the ball look, 14 technique, 14 decisions as well is superb. But um, yeah, he's planning to leave at the end of the season when his contract runs out. He earns 350 a week. So with our finances, I mean, it's probably not a bad idea to get him off the books anyway. But um, yeah, that's the situation. If we look at what we're doing tactically now, I've just made a couple of little tweaks. Like I say, we, we were struggling to score goals. I am no longer playing out of defence. That is the main change we've made. Um, it just seems like getting the ball into midfield a little bit earlier just seems to create better chances. chances. Maybe, um, maybe not giving the opposition so much time to get back and get set defensively. So um, the last time you were here, we'd already stopped playing into space, looking for the ball in behind, playing much more to feet and now not playing out of defence. So that seems to have helped quite a lot. Um, outside of that, we've got some really big news in terms of contracts. Since you were last here, I've just really been concentrating on um, on getting con or getting contracts renewed for next season as I struggle to get my words out. I let a couple of players go. Jim Fenlon has left us, our, uh, our backup right and left back. He has finally gone. His £250 a game is off the books now. Uh, once we went out of all the comp cup competitions, it didn't really make much sense to keep him around. He wasn't playing. So uh, Jim Fenlon has moved on. And also Jordan Ponticelli, our backup striker and right winger, he has left as well. I needed to just balance the books a little bit because financially we're struggling. We are still, even after letting Fenland and uh, Ponticelli go, we are still about £200 a week over the wage budget. And the wage budget is actually going down for next season. Now, I've seen these change before. What it says here for next season is not always the case. But right now, it seems that next season we are going to have a slightly smaller wage budget. So I really need to get that down. It's um, it means I cannot sign anyone else right now because I just can't offer any contracts. And we're eighty five thousand pounds in debt again. After the FA Cup run, we were seventeen thousand in debt that has shot up to eighty five thousand and we're still only in March. So expect that to hit one hundred thousand by the end of the season, which is very, very frustrating to be back one hundred thousand again. Um, we really need to go up. If we take a look at uh, the squad, so you can see here with the contracts, we now have the majority of the squad, the majority of the starters all signed up until the end of next season. And fortunately, we've managed to uh, keep everybody on more or less the same money. The guys that have uh, re-signed, James Price stayed on £500 a week, Jack Brown, um, he signed again and he actually went down from 325 a week to 300. Lloyd Marsh Hughes has signed for 250. Um, and uh, Thomas Hughes, his did increase from 325 to 375, I think. Um, George Ray, Sam Blair was already signed up for 325 a week. Max Waltman has re signed, he is on 375 a week now. Um, the only the only players I really do want to get signed for next season 
are Cameron Gabadebo, who is currently earning 350 a week. I want to get him on again. And Omar Sawunmi, he does want to sign a new contract, but I think he wants 275 a week, which would be a hundred pounds increase. I'm not sure I want to do that right now. I want to see what league we're in before I do that. Um, Diamond Edwards will be leaving. That's 350 off the books. Morton Spencer will be leaving. That's 450 off the books. King James will be leaving. So that will be almost another 300. So um, we're looking at kind of 750, 800 going off the books at the end of the season, along with some of these other players. Um, I've offered Jack Earring a new contract. I've offered Ryan Crowsdale a new contract. So I think right now with the players definitely leaving, we might have somewhere in the region of £500 to play with if the uh, the budgets stay the same. So we've got to see what happens with that. Um, it's a little bit frustrating. I think we really do need to go up uh, to really... To, to really be able to bump up the wage budget and, and really improve things. We also, next season, we are obligated to upgrade our stadium. Um, it can be upgraded to a 5,000-seater. It doesn't meet Vanarama National League requirements right now. We had a year's grace to get it done. So um, that will have to be done for next season. That is going to eat up a lot of money as well. We are not going to be in a good financial situation next season. So going up to the National League is absolutely vital to keep this club moving forward. I think if we don't go up this season, things are really, really going to be a struggle from next season onwards. Next season, I'm going to have to do a lot more in the loan market and really depend on getting players in from, uh, from higher level clubs without any fees to make things work. It's, it, it's going to be a real struggle otherwise. Now, even though it looks like we're not going to go up automatically, it looks like we are going to have to settle for playoffs, I am really, really confident. I mean, we are still on, on at the moment for a 100-point season, which would obviously be incredible. We did 109 points last season. We can still do 100 points this season. To not go up with 100 points would be a big disappointment, but it also gives me the confidence that we can take on anybody in the playoffs. So that's where we are. Let's get into today's game. York City at home. Gloucester are playing at home against Spennymore. I'd expect them to win that very, very easily. We really need Gloucester. To, we, we need, we've got nine games left. We play them on the last game of the season. So we need them to lose two of their next eight, which seems really, really improbable. They've only lost one all season. I can't see it happening, but we'll... We'll try and keep the pressure on as long as we can and we'll try and make sure that we are there to take advantage if they slip up. So the, the team for today's game, Blair in goal, Williams and Clements, the fullbacks as always, Gabadebo and George Ray, the established back two, um, Jack Earing and Crowsdale in midfield again, established Crowsdale has really started to pick up his form, which has been nice. Waltman and uh, Thomas Hughes on the wings, Lloyd Marsh Hughes in the number 10 role, and James Price up front. I mean, it really is just a settled team now. So, Wunmi James, Jack Brown, Edwards, and Burstow on the bench. Um, I mean, I've got to see what happens with Diamond Edwards. I mean, you can see his morale is in the toilet. Um, nobody has wanted to come in for him. Um, the, the transfer deadline has now passed. So he's staying till the end of the season. I didn't want to let him go without being able to get someone else in. I couldn't find another winger of the same quality that I could have brought in. I didn't want to leave myself short for the end of the season and for the playoffs. So he's still here right now. Um, so far, his morale is not affecting the rest of the group. He's not an influential player. So um, hopefully we can just get decent enough squad performances out of him for the rest of the season and then let him go in the summer he, he earns 350 a week which to be honest he's not really worth i said at the start of the season i only really bought him in because his name was diamond i wanted i wanted diamond playing for the diamonds and um, yeah we've done it now we've we we've had that experiment let's uh, let's move on from it so um i'm gonna go with the media for our team talk, the media have given you a lot of credit lately. Go out and put on a worthy display. 
They always respond well when they know they're being talked about well in the media. They are absolute prima donnas. Uh, the squad are nicely motivated for this one. I'm going to make some tactical changes, though, because they play a 4-3-1-2. So they've got a number 10 behind their two strikers. So I'm going to move Crowsdale back into the defensive midfield position. And I'm going to get him marking Bernardo Rosa there. Do I Mike mark tightly? And I'm going to leave it just marking reg as a as a regular marker rather than sort of worrying about being too tight on him and yeah i'm just going to move back uh marsh Hughes into the attacking to, still an advanced playmaker but as an attacking midfielder rather than the number 10 um that's all the changes i'm going to make for now we'll see how things go um it may well be with the formation they play and the fact they don't have wingers i might want to really go out to the wings and use the overlaps to really try and get an advantage over them. I think uh, it's a formation that gives us lots of opportunities to to dominate. I mean, we've started well here with three shots, but so far no highlights. Let's just encourage the players. You can see we're dominating possession, but things are a little bit slow right now. Let's make some changes. As we go past 20 minutes, I am going to go wide and I'm going to play out to the wings. And I'm going to try and be a little bit quicker as well. And yeah, I'm still going to distribute to the fullbacks. I'm going to leave it there for now. I'm not going to make any more changes right now. We'll leave it at that. Just playing out to the wings, concentrating on the width. Hopefully, with the overlaps that we're playing, that's going to give us numbers up on that side. Let's demand more here. It's again been a very, very cagey game. The last time we played York City, when we played away, it was also very, very cagey, very, very closed. And we finally get a highlight. And it is going out to the wings that kicks off the highlight. And we move forward now. And just that 2v1 that we've got down the wing. I mean, they're, they're having to really scoot across their three central midfielders to deal with it. But we lose it there. They win it back and get the break. And this looks dangerous. Well won. But they then get it straight back. And they are in with Hurd. Oof. And we are very lucky. Very fortunate to get away with that there. And now Hughes. Thomas Hughes with a chance from a free kick. Palmed away by, I think that was Oxley, wasn't it? And there's Gloucester ahead in their game. So there's the pressure for us. To keep this going. Gabadebo gets his head on the ball. But over the bar. And we do now. To stay in touch with them. Right now Gloucester are 10 points clear. At the top of the league. We have to do much better here. Let's try and. Really get these players. Focused for the second half. We have to come up. With more chances here. And I'm wondering. If I actually change to our formation from last season or even go and and just match up with them completely, do a 4-3-1-2 and match up completely, just thinking that we, we are probably the better team. I mean, this has just been really, really poor. We've had two highlights the whole game. We are not creating chances. Just really disappointed. I'm going to go attack in rather than positive mentality and i'm going to go expressive as we get a highlight here clements to put the throw in price gets a hold of it puts it in at the back post i think ray's going to be offside no doubt about it it was clear and obvious wasn't it no doubt about that one disappointing from george ray right let's see let's demand more again and i'm I'm going to have to make changes here, aren't I? This is another poor performance in front of goal. Really, really disappointing. Um, i tell you what I'm going to do. I'm actually, I'm going to go three strikers. I'm going to put Thomas Hughes in there. And I'm going to put him as a, an attacking deep line forward as he played two seasons ago. And I think I'm going to take Max Waltman off. I'm going to bring on Mason Burstow, who has been a, a very, very good option this season. What role do I give him? 
I think I'm going to go with two advanced forwards. I've got two advanced forwards on the field now. Um, let's see if that's going to be enough. We're kind of matching them up, but not quite. I'm actually going to go a little bit more direct with that as well. Um, let's just change that to be a little bit more direct in how we're playing. Get the ball up a little bit quicker and we're going to shoot on sight and play for set pieces now. Let's get early crosses into those three strikers as well. Oh my goodness. Ah. Bailey Clements. Oh dear. All right, let's uh, let's bring on some wound meat, and I'm going to make Ray as the more technical player. I'm going to make him the fullback. That's disappointing, isn't it? I do hope that is not a long-term injury because we now only have one other left back in the squad. Now we've let Jim Fenland go. One of our low knees left as Gloucester go two nil up. Last five minutes. Let's just. Get the ball played in really, really quick now. Let's just really try and get something here. Counter, distribute quickly into the forwards. Completely push up. I mean, this would definitely be, if the title wasn't gone before this, it definitely is now. Um, let's see if there's one little twist in the tail. Again, we've had the better of the game. We have barely created a highlight. They win it back. Oh, are we getting a sting in the tail here? Oh no. Don't do this to me, football manager. Well headed away. Come on, let's get a break here. Into Bursto. He's finished it. That is absolutely beautiful. He keeps the league alive. Let's just change things up. <laughs> Let's just close things up completely now. Um, what, what on earth can I change to make this more defensive as we finish? <laughs> I've now just got all out attack on the field. Um, I'm going to leave it at that. I'm not going to change the formation around. I don't really have the players. I'm just... Uh, I'm relieved is all I can say right now. Mason Burst, though, he's turned out to be a really good sign-in. I think that's his ninth of the season on £160 a week. I think it's a really good, a really good sign-in. I mean, that was a lot more difficult than it should have been in the end. If you look at the stats, we were well on top. We just couldn't create. And, uh, well, in the end, we get the three points. And at this stage of the season... At this stage of the season, I mean, that's really all that matters, isn't it? Um, all we've done is just kept the pressure on. So, yeah, I'm, well, I'm pleased to get over that hurdle. It wasn't pretty, was it? As much as the stats say we dominated that game, we barely created a highlight. It was very, very poor at the attacking end of the field. Um, but we've got there. We've got there. We've got over the line. And... As is customary, our, uh, uh, as is customary now, we are stuck in a loop waiting to get the media reaction to that game. And as is customary, as soon as I talk about it, the loop finishes. So yeah, there we go. We stay eight points behind, eight games to play now. The chances of Gloucester slipping up here, I think, are extremely, extremely small. Um, but let's see what happens, eh? Nuneaton Borough are now last place in the league. Real shame for them. They haven't coped with their promotion at all. Um, when are we back? I think I already know when we are back. I, I am thinking that I now just come back at the end of the season for this little run-in in May. Blythe at home, Scarborough Athletic away. Scar Blythe were very good in the first half of the season, have dropped off in the second. Um, Scarborough Athletic are fighting for a playoff place and then Gloucester at home. What I will do is if there is any chance of us still winning this league, I might come back and do a triple header. 
or at the very least a double header with Scarborough and Gloucester. If if the league is done, if we're not going to be able to catch Gloucester, if they're not slipping up, I will just come back for the Gloucester game at home, see if we can give them a bit of a bloody nose on final day before we then go into the playoffs. So that's how things are looking. It's um, I'm trying to console myself. I'm I'm trying to tell myself that if you if you get a hundred points, it's still a great season. You don't have to win the league to have a great season. Um, well, I'm so used after the last two seasons to just winning all the time and dominating the league. I kind of feel like we're failing, but we've only lost three out of thirty four. We've got eighty three points. We've got a plus sixty goal difference. I'm, I I feel like I'm being really spoiled if I complain. Um, yeah, you can see here, there's a hell of a race on for the playoffs. Hereford currently occupy the last spot with 47 points. And really, you can probably go down to Boston United there on 42 and say that any of these four teams could still realistically think they're in with a chance. So um, it, it, it's shaping up to be an exciting end to the season. But um, I'm, I'm pretty certain now we're going to end up with second place. Um yeah, let's just um, let's just see how strongly we can finish, and and if maybe Gloucester, uh, perhaps got a slip up in them, they do have two or three tough games left. They do definitely have a harder run in than us. They go away to York in the next game. Also, York are I think fourth in the league now. Scarborough at home, who are pushing for a playoff spot. Bradford PA at home, who beat them in the away game. And they then go away to Chester, who are third. And they're then at home against Hereford, who I think are sixth, aren't they? Did I just say Hereford? I did. So they are seventh, Hereford. So they've got their, probably their toughest spell of the season during the month of April. So I think at the end of April, there is still a possibility. They've also got Telford at home, who are also going for the playoffs. So they, they actually have a pretty tough run. I don't see them slipping up, but they do have a pretty pretty tough run. So um, there you go. You can see we're going to get £10,000 from having a nice little diamond cup. That's going to be good. So it costs us 2000 to organise it. We're going to make 8000 profit. So um, just using these three weeks to get some extra cash in. Um, but anyway, we will leave it there. We will be back for the season running. We will see how April goes. And I will see you guys in May to see if there's still a chance we could win the league. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, if you're enjoying the series, drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and we'll catch you very soon for another episode of Dog Turds Into Diamonds. Bye for now.